Yo, how's it going? I guess it's taking a while for my model to load in. Give me a while. Shouldn't take long. Am I in? Yeah! There I am. How you doing? So last time we made some plates, we made some silverware, I guess you could say silverware cutlery. I, in between streams, I did fine tune it a little bit. Uh, something I found out uh, by making it in the way that I did with the, how do you call it, the, uh, the curves. If you enter 180 here, it actually halves the object. So it gets easier to to fine tune it pretty much. So you can see the exact profile of the plate without having to guess anymore. So that makes it way better. Hey Aiko. Hello Jin, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I was just talking about that I modified uh, something off stream. So it looks nicer now. So we can do that easily by doing this. And now it's a full plate something other that i uh, figured out which was pretty funny is that if you have these shapes we only have the shapes because there's uh 32 steps to the shape right so you can see that over here so now imagine if you bring it down to four so four corners instead of uh, 32 bam suddenly it's a square plate As you can see, and we can do that the same with with this one. If you just press four, suddenly it's it's all square. Bam. So if we ever feel like, hey, we don't need uh, round plates, we need square ones. We can just do that. Or maybe if you feel a little bit futuristic, we can just add a six, and then it becomes a hexagon. In case you want that or well i think eight might be interesting as well yep eight eight and we can just change that on the fly whenever we want we don't have to actually like save them as different assets we can just save it as one asset and then memorize it that we can just alter the shape that way so that saves a lot of time in the future like we can have like different shapes of plate of course uh, a viewport of two probably wouldn't work because that's that's flat <laughs> as you can see over here but what about three wow we actually have a triangle plate five yeah so you have a lot of options here i like that idea of of it being like multifunctional so you can actually use it well in the future but we want to start with round plates right so we're gonna do this uh let's see what was something else that we wanted to work on the balls we wanted to have the balls hmm what is a good thing to work on for the balls hmm i think we can just take the biggest plate and then Probably copy it like this. Where is it? Why is it saved in in steak knife? Oh well, doesn't matter. Uh, we can just turn this into a bowl, and we can just modify the base shape so we do, do 180 again and then we're gonna zoom in to so take a better look at the object and then we're gonna edit it and then we should probably move most of this up mm.
think this one should be smoother, right? Is this considered a dessert bowl? I'm not sure. It is a bowl at least. And then we can do this. should rotate this what about you let's rotate you upwards as well then move you outwards No, maybe we can just remove this one in between. Uh huh. And then we can select this. Can we do the same with this one? And then we click this and say this and say. We just want it more like that. Then we make this one smaller as well. Move it a little bit more inward. So let's see what it looks like. Oh, Jin, have you heard about the Zellison Zero final beta test? Wait. I see you have knives. Who are you going to stab? You know. Someone last time asked me about the same thing about the forks. Like, oh, I see you have forks. Are you trying to stab someone in the eyeball? <laughs> what is it with people and stabbing? No, this is to cut your steaks. Like, we got uh, three different knives. We got a smooth knife for sharp cuts. We got, uh, like, a butter knife, which is, like, to spread stuff ev evenly. Which, but it isn't really that sharp. Uh, this one, which you can see, and then we got the last one that is sharp. You're probably not gonna notice if it's like laying around in the scene, but it's just nice to know you have like these kind of objects laying around for whenever you need them. So if you turn this back into 360 degrees. We have a little bowl. As you can see. Now, what was the command for duplicating this? Shift D? Yes. I should probably, let's see, center. Mm. I think this one fits with that one and then we can make this one a little bit bigger bigger
hopefully it will look nice. Hmm. But I don't know about the uh, Zenless Zone Zero final beta test. Have you been playing it? Do you recommend it? Let's see. If you make this 360, this isn't the desert bowl. This is more like a, what should I call this? It's not a desert bowl. It's not a soup bowl. It might be more of a salad bowl. And this one, I think. Uh, I haven't played it yet. It starts at 19. Ooh, in two days, huh? Friday. Are you excited for it? Hmm. This somehow feels like too big for a soup, right? Wait, we can just uh, new. Where's the new one? There. We can maybe call it like a ramen bowl. Oh, it's a Hoyo game. Man, I feel like I shouldn't get into too many more gacha games, though. Like, I, I know it's. Uh, it's probably a good game, but I'm worried that it's going to eat up a lot of time. Hey, Stone Toad! Long time no see, how are you doing? Let's see... They do eat time. Ah, you're familiar! <laughs> okay, let's do this. And then we're going to duplicate this one again with Shift-D. I said shift D and then I'm gonna align you to the X axis so we can move you over here and then probably link you up to around here. It's more roguelike. Wait, does that mean you actually lose your progress or how should I think about this? But yeah, um, Stone Toad, welcome, welcome. Uh, we're doing some prop modeling today, uh, which is just making base shapes for uh, Blender. So we can reuse that later to decorate scenes. At the moment, I'm working on cutlery and uh, how do you call that other stuff again? Dinner plates or like uh, dinnerware. So I'm now doing the bowls. Last time I did the, the forks, the knives, the spoons. So this time, oh yeah, also the plates. And this time I'm doing the bowls. And I should I'll probably also make like a cutting board. I think that would also be a nice one. The nice thing about working with curves is you can like sculpt them very easily and like modify the shapes of pretty much everything. Like look at this. I can just say like, oh, I want it smaller. I want it cuter. I can just make it like this. And then I can move it up so it's more round. And for this shape, I can... Oop. That might be a little bit too high if I did that. If you die, you have to redo the quest. Redo the quest? Uh, hmm.
You mean like the, the main story line quest or how should I imagine this? I think we might have to move this one further inside. Like this. Object mode. Let's see what it looks like in 360. The bottom looks a little bit weird though. So can we move it up a little bit? Maybe it also has to be like thinner. I think that that looks nicer. What are we thinking about the size on the top though? Feel that can also be a little bit thinner. I think that looks sort of okay. So let's make this 360 degrees again. And then we can call this the soup bowl. Right, it's like an appetizer bowl, not too big. Mm. Oh, also we can do the same trick over here, of course. So if we lower the uh, viewport steps, we can turn this into uh, six. And suddenly, ba -ba. it's like this very unique shape. It's still a gacha game, but they mostly focus on rope like bits. Wait, so, huh? Like, do you still pull for characters then? Like, do you still pull for the character and the relics or like equipment? How do you call it? It's like you you farm for the equipment and then usually you have a weapon or a light cone that you have to roll for, right? And then also the character themselves. I'm, I'm guessing it's a similar system like that, but this time instead of being turn-based or instead of being like hack and slash, it's gonna be roguelike. Only characters, ah! But what would you say the game is like? Is it like RTS? Is it RPG? Because I think what Mihoyo is trying to do is trying to make a gacha game for every genre out there. So eventually they're probably going to hit like a racing game. They're going to make a racing game gacha game. Or they're going to make an FPS type gacha game. I think that's their like road plan on the long term. It might, it might not be like what they publicly say, but this is my gut feeling. This way they can attract multiple genre of gamers to their to their platform or like to their business without cutting themselves in the fingers by dividing their player base. Okay, we're gonna do a shift D again. And move you over here. 
can probably turn you on again like that and then we're gonna move this one to the um, I guess dessert bowl I think the dessert bowl might have how I'm imagining this it might have a little bit lower uh, lower edges up a little bit because with dessert uh, bowl you have to think about ice cream right is what I'm thinking like you serve ice in it so it can't be too big otherwise you're gonna get fat from all the sugars and delicious ice cream you can't have that Why is it bending so weird? Maybe you should just rotate. see what this looks like if we make it 360 degrees ice cream yes ice cream yo that would be cool if you have like a, a texture for ice so you can just uh, drop down like orbs or like balls and then apply the ice cream uh, texture to it and then recolor it to whatever color you want Yo, you can add desserts to the menu. Imagine not having just drinks, but also ice cream. can move this a little bit lower we should still be fine right and then we're gonna turn this 360 compare it it might still be a little bit on the big side I think it's this size would be nice. A little bit. This size. And then the soy sauce should be very small, right? Uh, soy sauce is very small. And also, the edge should be low as well. I've, I've seen streamers play ZZZ in the last test, and for what I saw, it's pretty good. Oh! 
So they're getting like positive feedback. Or how do you call it? Like pop, uh, positive reception? You know, maybe I can just delete this one as well. And then display with this size. So, Aiko, is this going to be your new addiction? Is it uh, <laughs> from, uh, what is it, Genshin to Honkai to Senless? Oh, even people who are not Hoyo fan? Wait, let me take a look at, because I, I, I have a hard time remembering what it looks like. Sen zone zero zzz are they reusing the characters from the previous games again because i i see someone that sort of looks like natasha somehow billy kid nicole demara soldier 11 alexandrina Ben Bigger. <laughs> oh, it's like Persona ish. Let me see some gameplay. Oh, they have like a comic style in the cutscenes. Or like... Okay, it looks nice with the colors. I'll say that. Also has that whole like oh, okay. Uh-huh. It's like more combat focused and sci-fi. Or what genre is it? Like cyberpunk, sci-fi, or I like the weapons and the gear though. Also, the cityscape, the modern cityscapes, appeals way more to me than like what Genshin had. Is it again that you have that you're playing with like four characters at the same time, or do you actually play as one character this time? Let's see, let's move up a little bit. Oh, 
Oh yeah, 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 you do fight as a party. This this reminds me a little bit about uh, what is it, Honkai Impact? But more modern. Well, that's pro probably the, the the wrong way to say it. Oh, so you have oh, that's cool. That you have like combo attacks. You work together with like another character. And then, of course, you have your ultimates. Oh. Okay. It's cyberpunk like. Only. Th oh, you play as three characters. Okay, okay. Hmm. Do you still have to do like do it like? Oh, you have to have the tank, and you need uh, a healer and a DPS like. Does it follow the Trinity? Like the the RPG Holy Grail? Or is it like three damage dealers pretty much? Discount as a soy sauce cup. I think it is. In my opinion, this is a soy sauce cup. Especially when you do it like this. And if you set two next to each other, then you can have wasabi in one, and then you have the, the soy sauce in the other. Or you can just mix it, of course. Okay. And that means we have to look for the next thing. We have all our, our uh, we have our balls. Let's see, because I haven't seen any tank or healing abilities in the last test. Oh, wait! It could be cool if there's like passive health regeneration. So imagine you play as one of the three characters, and the two characters that you're not playing as are slowly recovering health over time. So the better you are, uh, the, mo the longer you can play as one character, but the moment they get to low health, you could swap out and then let them slowly regain their health as you're playing with the next character. That could make the game more high paced and like more damage focused instead of like always having to heal your party again. Talking about healers, I'm really enjoying Gallagher. I think I can reach the 150 uh, break effect cap with my current build as well. And I just need to get more... Uh, what is it? I, I just need to max out my relics. And hopefully get more Gallagher's in the future. I think I have like an E2 Gallagher right now. Wait, oh, for that, the MC helps? Oh. Wait, is it that you again pick the MC as like, oh, I want to play the male or the female? Is it preordained or can you like customize your character this time around? Because that was also something that bothered me in Genshin. It's like the, the MCs didn't really feel like I was playing myself right or like playing the game as my own character in honkai that's uh honkai star Rail, that's a lot more because you have like the the snarky responses right so it's easier to feel immersed so i'm wondering what they're gonna do for for this endless then All right, sorry, I had to mute for a bit. Uh, let's see, what is the next thing that we can make? We got our balls. We got our... 
we don't really need the the square plates anymore because we can just change the shape of that rectangle flat plate rectangular mm, what we can do with that is hmm, we can import the plate from our other file i think But we might do that later. For teapot, mug, cup, sugar canister, round cup, sugar. Yeah, we have a lot of stuff we still have to make. Also, coaster is so <laughs> it's, it is a, it's very simple to make. But we should still do it. You can pick boy or girl, but both of them become a rabbit when you're going, when you're doing missions. Wait, so you don't play as yourself? So you're more... Wait, this time around, are you the mascot? So your, <laughs> so your, your own character is pretty much uh, Paimon or Pom Pom. <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. Did not expect that uh, angle. Mm. I have no inspiration for teapot at the moment, so I think we should definitely skip that. We can do the mug. And we can... Shift D that. Uh, there we go. Where are you? Where are you at? Where's the shape currently hiding? Oh, there you are. I want to move you to the mug. And then hide the bowls, hide the plates, work on the mug. And I think for this, we have to delete some stuff and also open it up, of course. 180 we have outfits we can pull oh really uh, vertices yes Might not have to perhaps not select this one. Mm. I think we can extrude. And then we bring you over here and then we should probably rotate this Maybe you rotate it a little bit more. I 
And then extrude. Yes, but only for the bunny form. Wait, only for the bunny. Wait, we have costumes for the bunny form. <laughs> and our weapons are bombs. So do we still help in the combat or not really? How does this for a container? Three sixty. No, no, no. Uh, wait, we have two solidifies. We don't want that. Uh, remove this one. Three sixty. Is there anything we can do with the rim, though? Thickness clamp, edge data. No, it just stops here. That's that's a little sad. Even thickness. I don't want just a rim. I'm curious what this looks like if you bring it down to, to four. Mm, doesn't look as good as the, as the balls though. This also just looks weird. Hey Jin, so what's this about a knife? What knife? I don't know anything about a knife. I'm I'm innocent, just so you know. Let's see. I'm gonna be lazy here and just duplicate this one again. Shift G. But this time, I'm gonna edit mode. We're going to remove the screw and we're going to move you outwards. And did you make a bezier pick again? Geometry. Oh, you got something here, boys. It's messed up, though. Can I turn this off? Why is it offset like this? Oh, offset zero. There we go. And then extrude maybe three millimeters. 
What about two? Uh-huh. And then we're gonna give it a depth. Oh, that's a lot. What if we just turn it to two? Hmm. Not exactly what I'm hoping for. Curve object name that defies the taper width. Taper radius. Uh, I think you close the edges again on this thing. Emissions, the MC is backup. Oh, it's like an operator kind of person. I'm guessing. This is gonna look ugly for a bit, but hey. We have to start somewhere. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> it looks so dumb. Okay, we have to compare size. Uh, don't take that out of context, please. So this cup is six centimeters high. Six centimeters is not a lot, I feel. Well, no, six can actually work. Of course, there are bigger mugs. I think maybe eight centimeter might be nicer as a size. So if we edit it and then grab this one and this one and then go up by 20 millimeters. And then maybe this one can go down a little bit. I really feel like this is a maybe a little bit too thin of a cup. I feel like maybe we have to move it outwards a little bit. And then edit. It's still not what we want, but it's get, it's getting closer. It's getting closer. right and i think what we want over here is it to curve this way and then we're gonna extrude it uh, i feel like this thing should be um, Wait, can I, can I tilt this thing? Yes, we can. 90 degrees tilted. If you now make it, aha, 1.5. And then for example, this one three or we're getting somewhere boys something like that we use the bunny form to help the characters mm. but it's nice that they're trying something new right
Mm. Maybe I have to rotate this a little bit. Bring it up. And then extrude again. What I think we have to do is go down now and then rotate it again. Always, always willing to try and see how things go. Yeah, I think that's that's making them very successful at the moment, right? What are we thinking so far of this? I think... Um, I think it fits, right? Nope, there's still a little space here. For a bit there, the shading made it look like the handle wasn't connected. Yeah, I noticed that as well. Yeah, those co uh, color blending into background color. Yeah, you, you, it, it was over here, right? Is that what you're talking about, over here? So now you can actually see it's like passing through correctly. Yeah, you can see the entire shape is like passed through. So now it's fixed, I think. One point five. I think we can move this one upwards a little bit and maybe rotate it more like this. I think this is a pretty good cup. As you rotate, there's a spot where the show just blends with the background. It's only an artifact of the preview rendering. Mm. Now it's looking decent, right? I hope. And or the stream losing color depth. Oh. I think at the moment it's like sometimes it's like like this. Do you mean this when the camera is like going through an object like this? How should I imitate that?
Like when it's doing weird stuff. But I think we got it solved now, right? It's just a simple cup. And it's made out of two parts. This one and this one. Mm. How much does a cup this uh, differs from a mug, though? A cup is pretty much a mug without the ear, right? Sorta. Mm. It can be. Turn this to where is it again? Hundred eighty. Mm. I feel we should make the shape a little bit more interesting on the cup. It's not too interesting, but at least it's like a, a different shape, right? Hmm. A cup of coffee as well. So, from a practical point of view, make sure that it's very. Wait, make sure it's very slightly wider at the top, or otherwise, uh, something to keep it from slipping through your. If it's slightly. Oh, true, true. Oh, wait, I know what I want to make. Yeah, so mugs are like tall uh, things to put chocolate milk in, right? But if you think about those espresso cups, like the coffee cups, those tend to be like lower to the ground and then much, much wider, right? Uh, how to correctly translate this into 3D though? Like a cappuccino cup? Mm, I think so. Let me double check. Personally, I don't really drink coffee, so I don't really know all the the special cup sizes for that cup the chino cup mm. the cappuccino cups that i'm seeing here are still pretty oh wait yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah yeah yes cappuccino cups are lower and wider and then usually they have like that special art on the inside right on the on the uh, coffee and cream stuff but i do see that they still have ears on it so i should definitely duplicate that as well so we're gonna shift d that shift d and then x move you over there move you over to the cup but what I do see is that the ear is a lot smaller. So I think we have to maybe do this. Like it has less height, but it, the ears are wider is what I'm seeing. Th I think the idea is that the white top makes it easy to get a lot of foam. Oh yeah, yes, the foam and the... Uh, 
what is it the foam and the cream and then they make latte is it latte art like they make like the special art like uh, i i saw in japan they sometimes even have like uh like the anime characters Excuse me for butchering the current look of the cup or like the, <laughs> the ears of the cup. <laughs> the shape is uh, kind of messed up there. <laughs> Maybe we can even delete an extra vert to see in here. Be right, going to get some popcorn. Ah, you're gonna uh, look at my <laughs> look at this disaster unfold with popcorn. Place the sensor over the top and then sprinkle cinnamon or cocoa powder on it. Oh, yeah, true. They also use stencils. Uh, gonna rotate it. off the snapping so we have like free motion control then we adjust it a little bit like this and then i think we might have to do it like this And I think the the ear is like equal size. And it, with this one, the top is usually thicker and the bottom is like smaller. But I think for this one, we might have to go for even thickness. Or just, no, uh, make this smaller. <laughs> the one where you actually make the designs using a knife or something to mix the different foam colors is really tricky though yeah man have you seen that what they sometimes do in japan is like they actually ask who your favorite character is from like uh, a show and then the people are so talented at the bar or at the coffee shop that they can actually like rotate or like shake how do, you, how, how do you call it even like they, they know how to manipulate the foam in such a way that it actually looks like the character i saw a video of someone doing it and it was like oh shock yes exactly I think we can gain a little bit of height on, on, on this one still. And then we go over here and then we should probably move that a little bit like this. And then we rotate this one like this. Or does this look too thin now? I feel like it feels a little bit too thin.
think in, in, at the top it might also look a little bit weird because there's no no shape like this on on, on the top side. So it makes you feel like, huh? Where's this shape coming from? What if I put it a little bit lower and then rotate it upwards? It looks a little bit better on, on this side, but then we have struggles on the other side. Maybe we can uh, segment, subdivide. Japanese people are talented as hell. Yes. But it's also because they have like very... Mm, how do you say it? It's like tough living conditions for a first world country, right? Like there's a lot of pressure to perform. And I noticed that usually... Maybe it's like a culture difference there, but... I noticed that uh, some Japanese people, they really are specialists in one thing like they choose a hobby or an interest and then they dive full into that hobby or interest and they don't care about anything else how do you call it like the oh yeah yeah uh, otakus right so you got like the anime otakus but you also have apparently gun otakus so people who are super like knowledgeable and, and interested in guns and there's also gun gunplay gun, gunpla which is like the model kits right train otakus yes and airplane otakus like that's what i noticed like people who are uh you know how you can be like a jack of trades versus a specialist and i feel like japanese culture really uh, wants you to be a specialist in something and i feel like in the west you're more widespread i guess like you have multiple hobbies you have multiple interests multiple things you want to do and of course this is not like for everyone but i do notice that it's a thing apparently over there i think this air is pretty nice right although it's hmm So this is like eight centimeters high and this is like i'm gonna guess like five centimeters high not that tall but that makes it seem that these plates are really goddamn small so maybe i should actually increase the size of that Ah, yes, dinner plate, 15 centimeters. <laughs> Let me get my ruler. So I feel like a proper dinner plate would probably be like a fancy big dinner plate would probably be like 22, right? 22 to maybe 28. Wait, I can just look this up. Dinner plate di diameter. Dinner plate dia diameter. They say thirty centimeters.
the history of dinner plate sizes, the rise of obesity. So in the 1960s, apparently plates were a lot smaller where uh, the average plate was eight and a half inch. And then in the 1980s, it became 10 inches. And then in the 2000s, it became 11 inches. And in 2009, dinner plates became uh, uh, 12 inches. So what's 12 inches to inch freedom units to metric? Uh, let's see 12 inches it's 30 centimeters ah so we have to do like double the size pretty much is what <laughs> is what you're saying i mean i imagine while they are growing up they are mostly focused on school and can't have a lot of hobby oh yeah true like some cultures are very heavy on like the after school thing that you hmm how should i probably start this story oh yes so in japanese schools what i notice is that you have like normal school hours and then you also have like a school club you go after school right so you stay longer at school and then you come home, you do your homework, and then it's probably already night. So you don't really have a lot of time to do other stuff. There's even people who go to after school, which is what, around what time? Like seven o'clock till nine, maybe? Depending on what your age is. And that's almost mandatory if you want to get into a, a good university in Japan, because otherwise you're gonna lag behind. And I think it's also because Japan is like a, what do you call it? Like a shame culture, right? Like personal shame. Like if you don't, hmm. Yeah, if you don't uh, perform well, you have like this innate shame feeling, I'm guessing. That you're not performing well enough. So that digs inward, I, I guess. Well, I remember here in Europe, <laughs> whenever you got a grade, if you got uh, graded one out of ten and you got like a six then people were like okay that's fine <laughs> that's that's a that's a passing grade six is fine no problem hey danny there's also uh, uh there used to be a girl in my class and I, I remember this in middle school and we were in the first grade. Is it middle school or high school? I, I'm getting confused with the terms in English, but it's like the, the class you're in when you're like maybe 13 years old. And let's see, I was always a person who thought like minimal effort, right? <laughs> Just do it the easy way. Uh, if six is a passing grade, then I'm going to aim for that six and <laughs> nothing more. <laughs> Unless I really enjoyed the topic. Like, uh, I really enjoyed history and I really enjoyed uh, like physics and science and that sort of stuff. But I hated languages. But uh, I remember in that uh, grade, uh, there was a girl in my class and she always performed super well she got usually got like nines and tens and that sort of stuff like she really overstudied and then one time she performed very badly compared to what her norm was she got like a six and she bursted out into into tears in the middle of the classroom because she thought she failed herself or something and i was like wait what why are you crying you got a passing grade that's good enough <laughs> but apparently they uh, I guess it's like something family based that they had very high demands in what they wanted their children to get or to achieve I, I'm not really sure but I, I still remember that as something very odd to me oh my god I hated all science subjects I've always been bad at them really I love physics like physics is like everything around you magnets how do they work gravity g-forces 
I, I was a little bit low, uh, I wasn't that good at radio, uh, how do you call it, radioactivity calculations. I did do a lot of like Newton stuff and electrical currents like ampere and volts and what wattage, like that sort of stuff. I was pretty decent at that. Same with uh, the Joule. And with science, uh, I was pretty good at writing my reports. So the funny thing is, uh, I'm very bad at story writing, right? So, yeah, that didn't work well for my, like, I call it like English or Dutch reports for books, because you have to like summarize things, but still tell it in such a way that it sounds like a story or something, or yet like you're telling someone what happened. I wasn't really good at that. But on the science side, they expected you to do something very different. So they really wanted you to don't mention all the unnecessary stuff, but do report everything you did. So if you have like a science experiment, you had to say like, oh, I turned on the water for five minutes and boiled it at this and this degree. And then uh, Within two minutes, I had like condensation forming on the surface of the of the flask or whatever, like that kind of stuff. Like you had to really report what you saw. I was pretty decent at that because it was pretty much like write whatever you see at the exact time and temperature, like statistics. I understand the basic, but nothing more. But writing language and biology are my spot. Ooh interesting story there i actually originally wanted to do history uh, as my free choice subject but i was the only person with a technical uh specialization that was actually interested in history so like the dean called me into his office and he had a personal talk to me and he said like uh, so jin we can't really uh we have a problem here you're the only student that's interested in history <laughs> while doing like a technical uh, focused study. Uh, we can't really hire a history teacher only for one student. Uh, so we we like to request you to pick another <laughs> pick another class <laughs> because uh, I couldn't even sit in with like the other class because at those times I would have math or like. Uh, physics or science I gain hilarious I had something like that too in my uni <laughs> yeah so I was like worried like oh no what do I have to pick I don't want to pick like German or like uh, another language because I was sick of languages right I was always horrible with them and then I saw biology so I actually ended up picking biology and because I pick the classes that are necessary for a technical study or like university or bachelor degree and then I added biology to it my profile in lessons that I was given uh, actually coincided with two different fields so you had like four profiles you can get in my school and one was like pure technical the one was more like healthcare and medicine and biology kind of stuff then you had the artistic uh, focus and then the fourth one was economics so you could do economics you could do art you could do uh, like nature ish medicine slash biology healthcare stuff or you could go full technical so because I picked biology my lessons actually coincided with both medical, like healthcare stuff, and uh, like hard science. Hello, just feeling doing 14 stuff right now. Ooh. So yeah, when I was done with my high school, uh, the funny thing is I could pick 50% of all available uh, bachelors. <laughs> Normally you already specialize, so only like 25% is aim towards you right you can only uh for example if you pick the lessons for like science you can only go for bachelors that go further into that right more uh more science bachelors but since i did two of them at the same time where i coincided with like two at the same time i could actually pick 
uh, from medical uh, bachelors as well if I really wanted to. And back then I didn't really know what I wanted to be, but I ended up being an engineer, so <laughs> there's that. I actually have the title of engineer to my name. So if people actually uh, talk to me, or in a professional setting, my title would be uh, I-N-G, I think. I-N-G dot. Engineer. Because uh, engineer in Dutch is like ingenieur, which starts with an I. So it's like uh, uh, written a little bit different from English, but it carries the same weight. I was in a med school, but from the four main subjects, wait, which were math, physics, sci science, and biology, I was only good in biology. Ah, I really like biology, though. Well, there were some things I wasn't as interested in with the biology class. We we also never had um, the practical thing where you have to cut open a frog or whatever you always see that occur in like uh american tv shows that oh people are scared of the biology biology lesson where they have to cut open a frog right but we never had that here at most we were like raising plants i guess like you have to water plants and uh track their growth and write reports about that. So it's more focused on plants, I guess, than animal life. And then, of course, there's also the reproduction, uh, uh, how do you call it? Chapter of the biology book. I don't even know where people cut open a frog. That's literally traumatizing. Mm. Well, we, we had something else that's traumatizing instead if you want to know. <laughs> also, let's, uh, while we're talking, let's actually grow this thing out. So we have to do a factor two. Apparently this is now our plate. Let's check the height. So if we do this, this and this, yeah, it's like 30 centimeters and then if you then can we grab it again? It's four centimeters high. That's not that tall, actually, but it looks like massive. Can move all of these. Over here. And then I'm gonna guess we're gonna have to scale this one up as well by a factor two. My bio class was mainly focused on the human body works. Oh. We had a, in the first two grades, we had a special class for that, that focused on human, on the human body. But it was also called, uh, well, I, I guess the direct translation would be self-care, but it's, it's more like a lesson in self-care and hygiene. So like how to take care of your skin, how to take care of yourself, what's bacteria, how, like th those kind of things, the importance of being clean. And then it also involved topics like diseases or like STDs and protection. 
Yes, in the Netherlands, you actually get taught that there are condoms when you're, what, like 13, 14 years old. So before the age that you are usually active in that kind of way, they already taught you like, oh yeah, this is what that is and this is what it's for. If you want to try it out, then you'll have to buy one yourself. <laughs> they really just showed it with a banana. <laughs> But I heard it's uh, it's not very common in, in America. Like, there's a, how do you call it? Like a very strong church influence in America, I heard. So the most things that they teach you is like abstinence, which of course never is gonna work. Hmm. So this plate is called Oh this is the soup plate and this is this is the dinner plate. Wait, how how big is a soup plate then? Size of soup plate. They say nine inches. nine to seven inches gosh darn it i have to translate this nine inches to centimeters how much is that 22. Oh, okay so our okay our soup plate is a little bit oversized at the moment uh let's see It was 1.6 times 0 0.73. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No! <laughs> That's way too big. <laughs> Wait, what happened there then? 0.73 Okay, this should be the correct size for the soup plate And then Up Why are you not clipping? Okay, that one can still be a little bit bigger. The struggle of translating inches to centimeters is real. Yeah. Yeah, same. Uh, we were like in fifth grade and they gave us each... <laughs> wait, wait, they gave you each one to try it out? Did you also get your own banana? <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, let's put it at 2.8. And then this one is a B&B &B plate. How big is a B&B &B plate? Breakfast. Okay, 15 centimeters. Is this 15 centimeters? It's actually too big. Interesting. Did not expect that. So this one actually has to scale. Oh, 
1.5 Yep, that's around 15 And then a quarter plate or a quarter or a side plate Quarter plate size They say it's around seven inches Apparently So seven inches two centimeters How much is that? 17 no that makes doesn't make sense uh, side plate size oh, Okay, S they say Six and a half. So if it's six point five inch to centimeters, what's it gonna be? It's still sixteen centimeters. Hmm, that's a very small plate then. So this one has to go to 1.6 That feels strangely big IKEA please help me Side plate, 8 inch. Wait, how big are these plates? Oh, bread and butter plate. Appetizer plate, salad, dessert plate, dinner plate. Uh-huh. But I need something smaller. You know, it's the, those kind of small plates where you put a dessert on. Well, not really a dessert. How do you call it? Like a... Uh, like pie, like a slice of pie you put on, on there. Five inches. Five inches or like 12 centimeters. So like this, that's what I'm guessing. Hmm. I think it shouldn't be this elevated then. Then you have to move it downwards. Let me rotate this again.
let's see how it looks on 360. Hmm. What do you guys think? Ikea Wiz. <laughs> hey, Ikea, the, 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 don't make fun of Ikea. Ikea is super useful. Okay, their, their furniture is maybe like cheap and it, it, it scratches easy, but it's ideal to figure out like sizes of furniture, plates, forks, whatever. Like they, they freely give out all measurements of their stuff, which is amazing. I think what we might need here is move this one out. I think if we do that, things might suddenly look much better. And now we do 360 degrees. There we go. Look at that. It still has its own distinct shape compared to the rest. Although I must say, like this, this, this one feels kind of weak sauce now. <laughs> We have like only one IKEA in the whole country and I don't think I've ever been there. Really? Huh. Interesting. So from where I am, I think within a hundred kil kilometers, I think I have like three IKEAs. <laughs> I know, I know, I know there are multiple Ikeas around me. Like, I'm, I'm in the dead center between Ikeas. <laughs> and the funny thing is that every Ikea actually has a different interior. Like, on the outside, it all looks the same, but uh, the cool thing is they have this, uh, when you enter, they have this first floor. And then they have all their products uh, stalled out as if they're like bedrooms, kitchens, or living rooms. And then you can just check whatever you like in that room for the for the etiquette or like the piece of paper on it. <laughs> and then you can just write down the number of the product and add that to the list. They even give like free pencils and free paper there. So you can just make notes. And then after you're done noting down all the numbers, you can go to the ground floor and that's where all the, like the magazine, how do you call it, not magazine, like the storage is. And then you can directly pick it up from the storage. It's super easy. And then when you are outside, you can immediately load it into your car because they have like their own parking lot, which is uh, also part of the ground floor, I guess, or like it's uh, there's like an overhang. So you can actually drive your car a little bit inside and then you're still dry while you're like packing everything in. It's, it is a nightmare to get there by public transport, though. But having a car makes it so easy. And sometimes it's also nice just to go in there to get inspired. Like if, for example, if you don't know, uh, if you're out of ideas, then you can just have a look around at the existing decor. Yeah. Oh, wait, the, maybe the easiest way to compare it to is like, you know, those American uh, sitcoms, right? The, uh, with the live audience that they have like uh for example the french the fresh prince of bel-air they have uh an entire living room stalled out 
with the sofa and uh, with the windows and that sort of stuff, right? Imagine it like that, but then smaller rooms. That's how they put their first floor usually. So you can actually see which items work together well. At least one of them are full. You still have two more to look. <laughs> Of course it does. How else do they meet their client? Their clients getting lost quarter. Well, it's not that bad if you can at least read a map, because there are actually maps in. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's weird that they need a map, but yeah, they have maps inside the IKEA, and they show exactly where you are, and you can just follow the path, and then eventually you'll end up on the outside again, or you can make like uh, there's like one or two shortcuts. Or at the beginning of the IKEA, if you already know what you're gonna get, instead of going through the entire first floor, there's usually a shortcut immediately to the staircase that leads into the storage area. So you can just immediately head there and pick out what you'll need. A map for a shop, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the IKEA here has a line on the floor. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, my, uh, the one I know actually has projectors on the ceiling and it projects arrows on the floor. <laughs> so if you don't mind taking the long road, you can always uh, get to the end or start through. Well, it, it, it's also that uh, the end, there's a pathway between the end of the showroom back to the start of the showroom. But you have to be very clumsy and lost to immediately go back in there again. <laughs> Imagine Infinity Loop IKEA. The back rooms, but it's IKEA. Yo, that would be funny. Imagine they make a game where it's like IKEA, but the back rooms. Wait, I think I've seen this before. Wait, there's something different. Isn't that also like that other sem semi horror game? But you have to walk through like a metro line or like a train station and then you have to uh, notice if anything is different on the interior and if something's different you have to turn around and walk away but then imagine IKEA version <laughs> but I, I will say their furniture is very affordable or at least it used to be affordable I'm not sure what it is now I haven't been there for a while uh, it's also very light, so it's easy to travel with. The sad part though is that uh, the furniture you get there usually is hollow on the inside. So uh, if you're used to like those hardwood furniture items, then yeah, that's not. this is not that. This one is actually, uh, you have to imagine a frame of wood and then they use cardboard uh, in a honeycomb uh, shape on the inside and then they uh, put in an exterior plate on the on both sides so it looks like a plank but the plank is actually hollow and has a honey comb cardboard box interior to it that's why the furniture at IKEA usually is very light but it also makes it very burnable. So yeah, be careful with that. <laughs> the And because it's like, uh, how do you call it? Like fake wood or like it's like laminated wood or whatever it's called in English. It's also very easy to scratch and you can just sand it down because it's like a fake layer on the outside, right? It's like wood print layer on the outside. So that's also something you have to be careful about. like. Certain things are ideal to get from IKEA, but some things you'd rather get somewhere else. If you want like high quality stuff, maybe it's better to shop somewhere else. But for IKEA, it's ideal for students or for your first living space if you just want cheap, cheap stuff. And it also depends like how you treat it, of course. I do remember being impatient once uh, long ago. Uh, like take several shortcuts only to realize I got it backwards instead of forwards several times. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, but it's uh, some people in my country actually during Easter, 
they go there specifically. What happens if I move this? Oh yeah, I can't I can't move this because then it starts to do do the weird do the weirdy. I can move it in this direction though. So then we should do the same for the cups then, I I'm guessing. The balls. Our salad bowl, how big should it be? Oh geez, there's a lot of shapes on salad bowls. There's 24, 22, 20, 18, 16, 13, 10. I think 20 would be nice for this one. But let's see how big it is. This has to be twice as big. Almost twice as big. I think 1.9 maybe? And then, of course, we have to move this one as well. Okay, so what about the ramen bowl? Ramen bowl size. Ramen bowl optimal capacity. You have it at a ramen bowl apparently is 19 centimeters, 20 centimeters, or 23. Hmm. That's actually pretty big. Right? Yeah, we also have to... Damn, I, I've just been making miniature stuff. Apparently this is a proper size ramen bowl. Makes sense if you look at the sticks we got over here. And then there is the soup. Is this a soup bowl? How big is a soup bowl? They say 15 centimeters. Okay, how big are you at the moment? Oh shit, this is almost like times two and a half. Two point five. All right. Well, at least we're fixing the size now and then we can enjoy the benefits later. The third bowl, the third bowl size. Why are they not giving me measurements? Oh, okay, got it. They're saying... 12 centimeters. So, times two for this one. Two. And then, uh, the soy sauce dish size. They say that should be three inches. How much is three inches? Six 
7.6 apparently that's also a factor too i was making miniature plates <laughs> apparently um uh, object Wait, 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 wait. This one should probably be... Road... Object. Snap to... Cursor. Yes. And then these two... Uh, snap. No. Transform align objects. I think just in the X way. And then we do that the same over here. Transform align objects. Objects. Line. Nope. Objects transform a line. There we go. And this one has a, doesn't have an equal to it. Uh oh. This, 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 and this, and now object. Uh, line objects. Also, I think we have to do this, and then this, and then we set parent. Parent object. So now if I do this, the air moves with it. Sweet. We have to do that on this one as well. Object. Uh, parent. Parent. Object. So if you move this, the other one moves as well. And then we align that again. In the Y axis this time around. So we still got a knife over here. Huh. The soup bowl and the ramen bowl. Also, I haven't really talked about this, but uh, something cool we can do eventually. We can do it right now because we don't. Yeah, we are working in an asset file. But if we import this one into another file. And then also apply the materials we have from that other file. We can turn this into wood print or ceramics or metal or stonework. Like whatever we want, we can just apply the material to the shape and then it will automatically look like that. It gives a lot of diversity we can get just from these shapes. That's why I also haven't really painted them as of yet. Also, let's save. We have been streaming for almost two hours and I didn't save yet. How foolish of me. Imagine. Blender. <laughs> Working in Blender, not saving for two hours. That's a dead sentence right there. I had it happen that every movement I did it would just crash the file. Because the file was just too big. That's especially if you turn on the shading. That was really risky. Yeah, I know. I, sh I should pay more attention to that. But uh, it seems that the, the file is pretty light at the moment because we're mostly working with curves. 
A sugar canister. A sugar canister. Hmm. What is good for a sugar canister? I think we can use this as a base. Uh, why? And then we turn this into 180. Also, we can move this one. Hello, what you doing? There we are. Uh, go into edit mode. Then we're gonna move this one. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 we don't want that. Turn snapping off. <laughs> I think we want to move that a little bit lower. And then we're gonna extrude. And then move it inwards a little bit. And then rotate. Then we're gonna extrude again. And then we're gonna extrude again. And then make it smaller. This one as well. It looks a little bit like messed up over here, but that's because we turned it uh we turn it into a half but uh once we 360 degree this again then it should be fine so can i select this this uh and just duplicate it yes i can Then we extrude again. And we extrude again. Wait, what's happening here? Is it misaligned? Oh, it is misaligned. Okay, so we just select these. 
Move them. Move them to a line like this. Then we go upwards. We rotate this thing. And then I think we extrude again. And then hmm. What you can do with this one is make it smaller, probably. Oh, I, you don't allow me to make it smaller. Hmm. Is there a value we can change over here? Why does it allow me to? It has a solidify. Oh, okay, okay, I get it. It is because it is solidified. So imagine if I turn this off, suddenly it became flat. But now that it's flat, can I? Oh shoot! Apparently, that's not something we want. <laughs> nope, that's not something we want. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, you sure could say that. So this should solve itself in a bit.
Okay, so now if we turn it 360 degrees, it should be okay. 360. Hmm. I think maybe, what if it's four? What about six? Six looks kind of interesting. Like the general shape, right? Not the actual messed up textures. Wait, you like four or six? Because this is six at the moment. We do have to solve this one. Four? Oh. Yeah, but then we can put it on four. But we do have to solve this messed up texture, though. Something's going really wrong there. Zero point five. I think it's the inner layer and outer layer. If you do two, it just ends up being more messed up. Hmm. Sixty. Like the general shape is cool, but hmm. this is too thin. So what if we use our modifier again for the solidify? I'm not sure why it's suddenly doing that. This feels too weird. Like you, you, you want certain parts to be thicker and other parts to be thinner, right? What if we do thickness zero? If we do thickness zero, then we have to just manually make everything.
fifty. Oh, I can't scale it in that way, huh? I was hoping that I could just scale it like this, but then it doesn't want to do that. Hmm. Then we delete it. What in if instead we just extrude? This is going to be a very rough extrude, but... Extrude curve line. Is this how I do this? Vector online. Looks a bit, little bit weird on the inside, but I think we just have to live with it for now. Then we move these down. Mm, what do I do with this one? I think I should just delete this. If I set it to free, can I then freely move it however I want? Oh, we can have sharp edges now. Okay. I wonder if you can actually remove the handles as well. I thought you could do that, but I'm not seeing an option.
Oops. No, no, no. Is there something I can do to... What's aligned? Oh, maybe the dark color is just the shadow or... What if it's automatic? No, we don't want automatic. Okay, at least the bottom looks nicer now from the outside. Now we uh, we just have to do that for the for the top side as well then. Grab them both and move them out like that. And then we got that weird thing over there. I am thinking... Oop. I'm thinking wrong. Nope, that's the wrong one.
I think that's better. So is it just playing the same song over again? I hope not. No, it is a playlist. But it's a very short playlist. Hopefully people aren't annoyed by that. It's fine, don't worry. Okay, cool. These are all remixes from Sonic uh, Music. Like the, the person who made this is pretty talented in remixing the songs in such a way that you barely recognize them at times. You can see that the top left, it's this, this song is literally Eggman. <laughs> and it's a guy called in godry rock he, uh, he has his own youtube channel and he also said like oh my music is free to use for whatever as, as long as you give credits Uh, that's why it felt familiar ah so you were constantly thinking like hmm what is that song it's on the uh, it's on the tip of my uh, on the tip of my tongue what is it again it was Ackman all along hehehe <laughs> let's see if we make this 360 degrees what it looks like now that's way better right i think i just don't like the the top part of this thing That's the only thing that bothers that bothers me. Is I feel like this, 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 and this. Can I to a new object? Uh huh. gonna bring you down okay that fixes that then I think 
think we just have to delete this one. Uh huh. And now that this is a separate object, we can do with two. And then edit mode, extrude. No. So if you now bring this to 360 and this one to 360 then you can see that the head is round we can make that now for example 6 so it looks at least a little bit different maybe 8 Yeah, eight looks nice. So it's still like symmetrical in this axis and in this axis. So you pretty much grab it at this point. To uh, that's pretty much the lid. I think we have to also separate another thing. If we go to 180 degree vision. What we pretty much want is this, 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 and this, and then also separate that. Okay. And then we want to go back to 360. And then 360 for this. And then. Okay. So. Hmm. I think I'm gonna do this. This. I'm gonna parent that. So if I remove this, the other thing also moves. This one is. Also separate. Then I'm gonna move this one to this one, and then parent that as well. Now I feel that this is all a little bit small at the moment, because the idea is that this is a sugar canister, right? It should hold sugar. Or is that too big? Yeah, like uh, sugar cubes, right? Let's see, round cup? We already have round cups. see salt and pepper pot so that's usually just one shape right yeah I think I have an idea for this so we can do another What's the best way to approach this? Thinking cap, thinking cap, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Do I want to start fresh or do I want to reuse this? I think we could just reuse this. Although maybe not specifically that, but... Uh, Shift D. 
and then X. What we just want to do here, I think, is make the outer shell. You don't want to screw it. That's what I'm thinking. Like, we don't want to make it round. We want to make it... What we I want to do is do the mirror thing on the y axis, yes, and then in edit mode, select like all the things, and then we want to tilt them. Ninety degrees. And then if you extrude it, ta da. caps uh-huh and we want to make a very much simplified shape here not too much extras This one. Salt and pepper shakers are usually not that big i am gonna look at my ruler and say that they'd be maybe three centimeters or something so let's make this one 60. i still don't know how to make this round wait maybe i can look that up Be bezier or well just look up curve uh cap uh, round it. Rounded caps for curves, no add ons, no scripts. Create your cylinder with no end cap. Uh huh. Create a UV sphere in edit mode. 
The geometry section of the curve attributes, I don't think that that it's possible. Model your long hot dog shape in a straight line and then use curve deform modifier to armature to bend it. Oh, but I don't like that method. I think I can also delete this one. And then... Is there a way to see... Hmm... I don't... I guess... You can't really see it. This maybe and then we're gonna shift G and then we go into edit mode again This time, we're gonna change Uh huh Wait, maybe I can even Can I turn it to zero? Yes, I can turn it to zero Sweet So, can I so far now the question is how do I want to make that central handle I can make it make it look like this I can make it go like this or I can lower this and just make it Oh, yeah, 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 maybe that's a good idea. Gonna grab this one. Put this over here. And subdivide. A little bit too tall. I'm not sure what's happening here. So 
subdivide a one and then Then between here we should also subdivide then we're gonna do something funny by rotating this 90 degrees and moving them closer to each other a little bit of movement Whatcha think? Should you keep this space in between? And then on the side here and over here we can just place the the salt shaker and the what is it yeah the salt and the pepper you know the way that this looks almost looks like you can add like a menu card to this thing like have it yo that's actually a brilliant idea we can actually add a menu card in between Or like a drink card of our like our very unique drinks. Or, instead of the salt and pepper, we can have the soy sauce here and the wasabi. <laughs> but then it, it, it means it would probably have to be a little bit longer. Or it would have like the salt, pepper and the bigger soy sauce over here. I mean, we could do that.
So imagine if you just made this a little bit longer. Then this one. And then instead of so you have two the pepper and the salt over here and then the soy sauce over here then it becomes a, a proper restaurant kind of thing right and then you can put a slide of paper in between for the menu card let's, let's see snap cursor to select it objects snap cursor to select it there we go and then we can add plane which is 30 millimeters 60 millimeters how big would a card be usually for a drink menu card like 10 centimeters also mini oil bottle with the soy sauce because i've seen it a lot Oh, true. The card with two, maybe nine. What if you make it nine? And then we flip it on the, I think Y axis for 90 degrees. And then we open up it we're gonna move you upwards and then we're just gonna say shift extrude edge in the y direction And then we're gonna say 90 again. But this time we're gonna move it slightly like this. And then we're gonna do this and say extrude edge in the Y direction. It's gonna say minus 90. And then we also gonna move it slightly the other direction. So by doing this, we are actually giving some width to this object. Also, I'm nuts, I'm getting hungry. Oh. Then we should probably move this out so that it doesn't clip and that's like six millimeters or 0 0.4 uh-huh and then we should do that as well for this one So the card is in the middle. That makes sense. 
Although mostly I see the menu card like on this side maybe or like in between here like this. I think we can just duplicate this. Uh, what is it? Shift D. Shift D. And then edit. And then select all. And I want to move you to the outside. And then I think we can just I think we can delete this. Then we also delete this one. And then we say extrude. We rotate this thing for 90 minus 90 degrees, I think. Let me extrude again. Hmm. I'm not sure if I'm happy with this. What we could also do is delete this, then edit this one. Subdivide this. Oh, we have to snap. Snap, snap. There we go. And this has to snap over here. Also my stomach's starting to grow. I think we can delete this one.
and go and get something to eat. I know, but I also want to work. I want to be productive. Don't, don't monk me, Aiko. <laughs> I, I know those eyes. <laughs> you can't be productive if you don't have energy. That's the weird thing. Like, my stomach is growling, but I'm not feeling low energy. But it is distracting, so I should probably go solve that soon. Don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll go after it. I just want to make finish this shape. Look at that. There's still some minor things I can move like this, so it's straight. So now it looks like metal wire that's like encased or like so soldered together. That's an illusion. Go eat. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I'll go grab something to eat then. Um, in the meanwhile, you guys can just enjoy this sight. Is that okay? You guys can look at this beautiful set of cutlery and dinnerware, which is still without materials or color. But I'll be right back then. Uh, I'm going to mute my mic while I'm away, though. See you in a bit.
I have returned with food. What I have is... Hmm... What do they call this? What's the proper name for this? It's not a burrito. Oh, they call it pita. You guys know what a pita is? It's not a pizza, it's a pita with a P I T. Pit. And I filled it with some cabbage, some carrot, some mincemeat, some mushrooms, some garlic sauce. I'm gonna be eating now. To to regain my energy, right? <laughs> Sounds very tasty. It is. Wait, have you guys ever heard of Turkish pizza? Not the Italian pizza, but Turkish pizza. And for drinks, I got milk. I'm a milk drinker. Yeah, Turkish pizza. So the cool thing about Turkish pizza is what they do is you have to imagine like round dough pretty much like a pizza and then they put like a, a mincemeat sauce kind of layer on top of it and then they already put it in uh, the oven so that the mincemeat and the sauce kind of dries up against the dough while the dough is prepared so that means you got like the the meat and the dough stuck to each other and then what they then do is usually add like cabbage carrot uh, with onions uh, on top of it in the center and then they put in chili sauce and garlic sauce and then they take the both ends of the pizza and then they roll it up they make it into a burrito pretty much and that's a Turkish pizza yeah it's pretty much like a burrito right So the veggies are fresh? Yeah! It's very popular in the Netherlands. Like, uh, I think every village over here has like a Turkish bakery with like the Turkish pizzas being sold. Or the kebab. Like a sandwich kebab. And of course, if you want, you can add uh, like grated cheese to the to the Turkish pizza, but it's not mandatory or it's not like normal to do that. So what you pretty much get is like a thin layer of dough, some meat, some tomato sauce that's like dried up against the dough, and then you have like multiple fresh vegetables. So actually, Turkish pizza is actually more healthy than an Italian pizza or American pizza uh, because the dough is thinner, like Italian pizza thin but it doesn't have the cheese from a normal pizza and there's a lot of carbs in pizza, uh, in the cheese, right? First thing to that that I've tried is swarma Hmm. The one I had was like cheese. Uh, wait, what's satar? I, I don't think I've heard of satar before. Is 
It's a herb. Oh. From what kind of kitchen is that herb? Like, uh, what kind of uh, culture uses Zatar the most? Because you have like Chinese kitchen, Indonesian kitchen, Thai kitchen, Italian kitchen, French, etc., etc. Middle Eastern. Oh. <clears throat> That sound, then it sounds like it could be part of a Turkish pizza. But it's usually... I don't think it's ever served with that. Or at least I don't recognize the name. So what we should be the what we should be doing here is add the the soy sauce, the oil, wait the soy sauce bottle, the oil bottle, the salt and pepper, right? It's also the name of a spice mixture that includes the herb along with Toasted sesame seeds, dried sumac, often salt and other spi spices. Oh. So is it like the Middle Eastern version of like the four se uh, the four spices or like the four seasons of the Chinese kitchen? I think, uh, yeah, I think it was China that has like four season spice. I think they call it Four Seasons Spice, at least. Hmm. But that means I have something to look up then. Maybe they sell it here in a supermarket or like a Turkish store. Or... Hmm. Do you uh, do you guys also have those specialty shops for like certain cultures? Like, oh, you want to shop for like Indonesian uh, ingredients, then you go to that shop. If you want to shop for, uh, hmm, yeah, hmm. Well, you don't have them too often, right? It depends on where you live. I, I'm guessing they, these kind of stores open up more in like big cities than in uh, like countryside or suburban areas. Most of the places are bundled. Mm. Oh, they they sell they sell ingredients for multiple cultures, pretty much. We usually just have aisles for them in the supermarket. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, I remember like. Uh, some of the specialty shops that I know, they have things for Indonesia, uh, but they also have stuff for... What's that country called again? Suriname? It's like a... I, th I think it's like South America. Mmm. They are far as hell. Mmm. I guess that's the benefit of being from the Netherlands. To finish that sentence, the reason why I think that's a benefit is because the distances are a lot closer. Like if I want to travel from the west side of the country to the east side of the country, I can probably do that in two hours, three hours maybe. That's like how small the Netherlands is. And it's all highway. <laughs> well, if you think about America, if you want to do a road trip from the west side to the east side of the country. <laughs> Wait, how much kilometers roughly? Uh, let me look that up actually. Uh, 
Google Maps. Google Maps, give me the kilometers. So if I were to pick this location as my start point, directions starting here, and then I want to go to the very first village across the border in Germany. I would drive, yeah, I could drive it in two hours and 30 minutes and the kilometers would be 225 kilometers. 225. But it's a little bit give or take depending on uh, how high or low you are. Like if you're on the top side or south side of the country. I'll have to drive for 30 hours to get to the other side of my country. <laughs> Damn. Really? This reminds me about the time I was in VC for some ga game thing. I always read that as gang thing. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was in VC chat for some gang stuff. <laughs> it turned out two of us were in the same city and the guy from the UK was like, Oh, you should meet up. And we were like, nah, it's a two hour drive away from each other. <laughs> And the UK guy was like, huh? How is that the same thing? Yeah, I know, right? That's such a, like, especially in the Netherlands, we could say like, oh, we live in two different cities, but then the distance between the cities is literally like half an hour, like 50 minutes, half hour, something like that. I guess that's what people, that's why people move around more here or like, they're okay with like moving cities but i know in other countries like if you move cities it's like a huge thing right because suddenly you can't stay in contact with your friends anymore but over here we have a pretty good uh public let's say a public transport system we have some decent trains we have decent metros trams buses and then also highways <laughs> oh, for I go a day or two? Jeez. I, I guess like countries like Indonesia are probably the same, right? Because Indonesia is like multiple islands. So that means you have to go by car and then by boat and then by car again just to reach the other side. It would be that better if public transit was better. Yo, the Dutch are pretty good at their public transport. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that. Wait, is there a way for me to show you guys that? Without doxing myself, of course. <laughs> I've recently moved to another apartment that is like 40 minutes away from the previous one and now I see my friends so rarely I feel like it's a long distance relationship wow but I, I guess it also depends on like if you have a car or not right I noticed that uh, when I didn't have a car yet mm, wait I should start from the start so I used to go by public transport just to go to school right because that's normal here to go to to school with the bus like public transport it's not a school bus and you could also go to your school with a bicycle and then when you're 16 you can get a scooter and then when you're uh, 18 you can go for your motorcycle or car license and you can drive a heavy motorcycle if you're 21 so 
I went for my motorcycle and I drove motorcycle uh, for a bit and then I lost my motorcycle because there was something wrong with the engine so it had to get demolished or like sent to the scrapyard and then I started to notice that how hard it is to suddenly rely on bicycles and public transport again compared to being free on the highway right or having your own vehicle and now I have a car again so now I'm happy I have a car so I can actually move to the other side of the country within one hour time oh that's interesting it's only 16 here for car license really oh since we're talking ages anyway so over here you can drink alcohol when you're 18 i know that in certain countries it is 21 i think Personally, I think they should up the age of alcohol, uh, like the minimal age for alcohol to 21. That way, when you learn to, how do you call it? If you learn how to drive on your 18th birthday, right? Or around that time, you would already have like three years of alcohol free driving. So it's like separated. Also, a little bit of a history lesson here in the Netherlands. Uh, ancient time though. Uh, the age where you could drink soft alcohol was 16, I believe. And with soft alcohol means alcohol, uh, there's like an alcohol percentage, right? In, in a lot of drinks. If it was a cert uh, below a certain amount, you were allowed to drink it when, you're, when you were 16. But later on, they upped it to 18. So all the all the alcoholic drinks turned 18. Because they noticed a lot of people misbehaving. Hmm. Wait, let me read up. Check me though, I guess you end up being 17 before you can drive alone. Oh, so usually you drive with drive with the person next to you, right? Here in Canada, where I live, it's 21, but most seniors it is at 16. The legal age would never never stop my classmates from drinking. Oh yeah, uh, I I I knew a few as well. Yeah, also when a person is 18, their brain is not fully developed yet, so drinking can mess up all. That all those things would be really cool if they I would up it same for me i didn't drink for like cultural reasons like uh, just in my household it was not normalized to be drinking alcohol like no one no one else in my family drank alcohol at the time so it wasn't even in the house so it wasn't even a temptation and if you look at the price of alcohol in the store it's pretty expensive so it's not something you just buy on a whim you actually have to get introduced to that I did get offered alcohol from my hmm, from my father when I was still too young to drink but since I was so used to not wanting to drink or not being interested to drink I just uh, said no I wasn't interested But he only offered it because it was like New Year's Eve. So he wanted to toast with everyone. But I was used to always just drinking lemonade at New Year's Eve. So I was just weirded out. I thought like, no, I don't want that. <laughs> and then my elder sister volunteered like, oh, you don't want to drink? Uh, I, I, I can <laughs> I can take your drink. She was she was more than happy to do this, do so as well. Because she was of legal age. So she could drink. Where I live, kids usually drink at 14 and stop drinking at 18, 20. <laughs> Damn, did they drink so much that they, they already retired from drinking? It's at least important to know what it tastes like so you can tell if someone has spiked the punch when you're at a party. Mm. 
there's uh there was a big warning for that uh when i w was still a teen so what they said is never accept punch or how do you say it like a cocktail that has been sitting in the refrigerator because um, how alcohol works is that uh, alcohol evaporates very easily, right? And because it evaporates, you can smell it. So that's why you can smell the alcohol in a drink. But if it's cooled in the fridge, then it becomes more solid. So it evaporates less. And that means you can't smell it as, as easily. So what happened in my teens was in my country apparently a lot of people were getting like alcohol spikes that they were being fed like cocktails or punch that came straight out of the fridge and because it was cool they couldn't anticipate or like measure how much alcohol was in there so they just drank it and because it was cool uh cooled it had a delayed effect in their stomach as well so they would over drink the punch or the cocktail thinking everything was okay and then once it got into uh, um, living room temperature or like uh, because their stomach is warming up the punch right then suddenly they get hit by a lot of alcohol and then they get super drunk so yeah you have to be super careful with it also welcome Kai Kai I how do I say that should I just say Kai Kai -ya? Kaya? I think it's Kaya, right? So I like one of my acquaintances who was into jello shots. Oh no, just Kai? Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, we were just talking about like uh, the, the different stuff you do at like 16, 18 or 21, depending on country. Because in certain countries, like the age of drinking is like 18 or 21 or the age of getting your car license or motorcycle license so yeah i was just uh, remembering like an old problem in my country so yeah uh that's what they warn about. Never drink cool alcohol because it has a delayed effect. Especially if you're inexperienced. Also for what's happening on stream, I'm currently uh, taking a break because I'm eating. I'm uh, eating a, a pita with some uh, minced meat, mushrooms, cabbage, carrot, uh, garlic sauce, that sort of stuff, and some cheese. Uh, but before that, I was working on 3D modeling in Blender. As you can see, we made some uh, nice looking stuff. We got some uh, spoons, we got some forks, we got uh, some knives, we have plates, we have bowls, we have cups and mugs, we have uh, a sugar holder, and at the moment, we are working on this thing. Which is the thing you always see in a restaurant, uh, which contains like the soy sauce, the oil, uh, the salt and pepper shakers as well. And the menu card usually. The reason why I'm doing this all is because I want to make an asset library where I can keep reusing these shapes very easily in future scenes because I want to 3D model interiors a lot more. Oh, Danny. <laughs> My friends went got a, a whole bottle of cold whiskey and well, after like half an hour, it was hell. Oh, damn. Yeah, you have to be careful with that. That sounds bad. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I've lived a pretty alcohol-free life myself. 
I, I did try it once, like a, a little bit. What I got was, uh, I'm not sure if you know the brand, but we we got a bottle of Bailey, and then what they did is they filled, uh, what was it, like one tenth of a glass with the Bailey, and then they added milk on top of it. And they said like, oh yeah, you can try it out like this. But I will say, even though there was like nine tenth milk and one tenth uh, alcohol, or like the Bailey, I still I I could still taste the alcohol, and I didn't like it. For some reason, I don't know why. Maybe because I didn't grow up with it, but alcohol tastes very sciency for me. <laughs> it's like uh, it, like it's coming straight out of a laboratory, right? Like it's distilled or whatever. It feels too artificial. <laughs> That's a description. <laughs> yeah, like maybe because uh, when I was still doing like science in, in like high school, um, we actually had a class or like a lesson where we distilled alcohol in the classroom. So our teacher actually taught us like, oh yeah, you can like uh, put some water, get some peeled apples, put them in the jar, uh, put some sugar in there, put some yeast in there, and then close the bottle and set it, yeah, let it sit for like four weeks or whatever. And then it would surely, it would slowly turn into alcohol, right? And part of the lesson was also being allowed like one little sip just to, so that you knew what alcohol would taste of uh taste like but i actually denied it but because my first uh well yeah my first major experience with alcohol was in a science lab <laughs> so that's why i immediately think back of the science lab whenever i smell like a very strong alcohol smell it's like Mm, you know that alcohol is also like a cleaning agent, right? Like if you want to remove bacteria from a surface or if you want to clean your hands or uh, d disinfect a wound. Like that's that's the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of alcohol now. <laughs> or if, if I taste it. Hmm. <laughs> There was news about someone dying a while back from something like that. Oh, that used to be a big problem for me as well. That they, well, not for me, but in this country, that uh, there were a lot of uh, people getting sick and then they had to go to a hospital to get their stomach pumped because they had to get the alcohol out of the body because it was too high a concentration and people would risk the chance of like alcohol poisoning. And, but that was like pre-COVID before COVID. After that, uh, like when COVID happened, all the partying was over. And post COVID, I think people just grew out of like the whole nightclub stuff. I don't drink al alcohol at all because I, I think it's a, it says alcohol, right? <clears throat> the thing is, it's censored on my on my chat there. <laughs> I can't taste it everywhere. It's awful for me in my country. If you drink, at least be responsible. True. That's something I, I'd recommend anyone. I think it's also maybe because I drove motorcycle or wanted to drive motorcycle that I didn't get interested in alcohol. Because uh, you can't really have someone else drive you home if you're on a motorcycle because they need a separate license for that. And I can't drive myself if I'm under the influence, right? Because, hey, you only have two wheels, so it's easy to fall. Um, 
what is that? Uh, promo code? I don't know anything about that. I think that's a fake message. Delete it. Delete it and yeet it. Man. Did they start doing other stuff this time? Like a, a while back, it was on YouTube where they started like advertising, uh, saying like, oh, I found your channel because I was watching. And then they, they say like 10 channel names. And then uh, they add something at the end, like YouTube has recommended me to you. And apparently if that bot shows up in your chat and successfully posts that, then it actually lowers your uh, your value in the algorithm. So it's like a sabotage thing. Or at least I was told that it was a sabotage thing. Because they say like, oh, because then YouTube thinks that you have a lot of bots in your channel. So your views are worth less. And it... Uh, it pushes you down in the algorithm because hey, bots don't count as viewer count, right? Or as popularity. And I hate that. Like, why? Just let me do my thing. You do your thing. Why spend time on bots, you know? Also, let me go grab something to drink and then we're gonna continue working again. I finished my food. And I'm back. See, I, be I behave. I behave. <laughs> I ate and drink. Are you happy now, Aiko? <laughs> I think for the salt shaker, I want to do something different. Mm. Go to object mode. And then what if I just add a cube like this? Usually there's like square, right? The salt shakers. Maybe you can have it like this. And then I go into edit. And then I delete the face. And we can use a modifier to add a bevel. That's a little bit too much bevel there. Okay, that's a decent first bevel, I think. And then we also add a uh, solidify. So it actually has a thickness. Then 10 millimeters is of course too much. 
that's better. What if it's three? Three works as well. And then we go back to, excuse me, edit mode. And then Maybe like this. This music is so good. I know, right? It's a remix of uh, this machine. It's a uh, it's a song from uh, uh, I think Sonic Heroes, and I think it's like Team Dark song, like Shadow, Roche, the Bat, and uh, what was the robot's name? Alpha. So I think we can grid fill this possibly. Uh, grid fill. No, we can't grid fill. That's annoying. Can we cut it? And then grid fill it? It is something. Hmm. What if we do it like this? <laughs> and then on the edge, we subdivide. I can move. I can scale these. Ah, interesting. Okay. Uh, if I move you one millimeter here and then one millimeter there, minus one. Not exactly what I want. Can I fill this? I can. But it would still not solve my problem. Hmm. How did people do that again? Wait. 
I have an idea. What if we do a cylinder and then we say face project no volume step by projecting onto face no well m maybe you can just put it here then like this and then we say this and then we input a value of what would our value be one need to inset why is it changing the entire shape of the entire object I just want to move this little now look at this If I select length and just move it away, what happens? Nothing happens. It's dancing. <laughs> okay, now it should be on top of it. But how do I turn turn a thirty two uh, circular shape into I feel a little bit stuck on this. Also, because like this is happening, I'm not sure why it's suddenly like changing the shape of that other object. That shouldn't have effect on each other. Something weird's going on here, definitely. Oh, what? Wait, 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 wait. What if we go back a little bit? Uh huh. What if we do it like this and then we shift B to duplicate the shape? And then we move that upwards and then we say that we're gonna. S Why is it separate by selection? Go into object mode, 
go into this mode, edit. And then we overlap and extrude. Of course, have to change this to something thinner. Then we extrude No <laughs> so it's a hex shape. Mm. I wonder, can I bevel this? I can always just close this up. Then I'm gonna uh, probably move you upwards to the right. Uh, let's see, should we say that the Salt and pepper should be this high. And at the moment, we're not seeing anything except for like the rough shape. But uh, once we attach like a glass material to this, should look a little bit nicer. And then of course here it has to be the area where there's like a lot of holes in there but we can do that i think with a normal map instead of actually making the holes we can just make dents in the texture so it, ha it gives the illusion of there being holes for without there actually being holes that should save us some polygons i guess is what you could say because making like a grid of little circles inside an area that's gonna eat up a lot of stuff at least on the on the only method that i know how to do this if i smooth this hmm. I don't like I don't get I, I don't like it if it's too smooth
Come on, don't be weird. I'm not sure if I'm satisfied with this at the moment. Just like the ideal thing, how I'm imagining this is if there's like a square bottom or like a rectangle bottom, then it narrows down up to here where there's a narrow neck, but then at the top it would be a circular design. I think that would be nicer to have. But we can just leave it like this for now. We can duplicate linked. If we do duplicate linked, it should copy any changes we do to the original object. Uh, y axis. So imagine we open this up and we say like, oh, uh, this shape over here, we want to extrude that. And as you can see, it also happens to the other one. In case we ever want to change anything. Yo, the, the soy sauce is probably also going to be rough to make. Oh. How long have you been busy? Four hours. Four hours. Okay, I can still do a little bit more, I think. I think we could just change our attention to the coaster. That's a that that's a simple shape, I think. It's pretty much just a disc. Can I change my view of vision? Should is that the center? Nope. If Wait, it is the center? Huh. Okay. Apparently it is the center. Then add mesh a uh, cylinder and the cylinder a, t a coaster isn't really that thick right it's like what two millimeters oh wait no that's the depth and then the radius would be 30 millimeters, maybe? Okay, a little bit bigger. Mm. 
That should be good enough. And then what we should do is an inset. Like this. And can we do a bevel then? And shade smooth. I'm fine with that being the top. I think there should no be should be no overlap between these two those. So what we could maybe do is like separate these. Split. What's going on here? Is it the bevel that's being weird? And then we have to do the same inset for this place and I remember that this software tends to not like circles coming together like this especially when it's this shape so we can just delete this delete the face then grab this do this and then grid fill uh face grid fill rotate and then we do the same on the top Now it seems pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. Select linked.
Then we select linked again and bring it back up. Wait, what? What's happening? Move closest vertex. There's something going on. Yeah, there's something going on that's not correct here. Why is it doing this? That's a coaster at least. Although maybe, hmm. What if I made the coaster instead of with the circle, if I made it with this method, then I can easily restyle that coaster into like a rectangular shape or hexagon or whatever. <coughs> Maybe that is better. And then we extrude. Eighty degrees. And then we extrude again towards the center. Okay. 
have to do this grab this and then y axis only but why is it doing that Wait, if I can, can I just say I want to remove the handle type? Remove handle from control point blender. How do you move Bezier handle in blender? How do you... Press X and then V. X. No, that's not it. It's not segments either. Hmm. Press V and set handle type to 3, then you can move the handle type separate and align them to the X axis. Ah. It's, no, it's still doing that weird thing in the center. This thing. Can get curve control points to show handle. That's not my issue. I want. Blender, delete, curve, handle. Uh, it's not giving me any options.
What if I do it one last time? Oh, it is a coaster, and from a distance, I don't see it anymore, so we're just taking it. So imagine if you want to turn it into a four. Look at that. We instantly have a square coaster. Or six. Okay, we got the cup, the sugar canister. We are still working on the salt and pepper pot. Uh huh. We don't have a teapot yet. Idea, idea on the paper. What if we give it a bevel? Bon appetit. Wait, what? <laughs> I already finished eating. Oh, Aiko! Oh, sorry, I didn't see your message. I'm back with a bowl of spaghetti. Mmm. Wait. Bon appetit is French, though. <laughs> What's the Italian way of saying... Uh, of saying that? Bienye ab appetito. <laughs> Something like that, I don't know. Zero point three. As you can see, now these pages have a certain thickness. Not a lot though. If we increase the segment. Yes, the segment. Although, this one seems to be acting a little bit strange. This, this bit. What if we solidify first and then... Nope. No other way around. Hmm. Can I split this?
What if we turn it off? Then we do the same on the other side. No. Okay, we add some width to it. If we now return this, maybe add 0 0.2. Hmm. That's not what I want. What if instead of bevel we add a subdivision and then we grab the top and we grab the bottom Still does that weird thing here. If we do a bevel now that we change that zero point two and we want so the strange thing is it does work on this side as you can see but on this side Hmm. As you can see, it doesn't really do, want to do much. Uh, percentage absolute.
also not it. Wait a moment. I have a weird idea. What if I just cut this through the center and then I say that I want to Well, let's first delete this one. And then everything attached to that one. Select linked. Delete. Uh-huh. And what if we now do a mirror? Flipping doesn't really seem to be doing anything. So it doesn't want to flip somehow. Also doesn't want to move away from it from itself. I think I might have to take a rest on this one. Like the, the salt and pepper container together with the soy sauce and that sort of stuff. Um, I think I'm a little bit stuck on it right now.
Like, we got the general idea. We have some shapes. But we are missing the logic behind the center thing. I'm not sure how to solve this yet. I do want it to look nice. Wait, it looks it looks sort of okay right now. What changed? Oh. And then, of course, I have to make the typical Kikoman uh, soya, uh, soy sauce. Which is like a, like a rounded bottle, I guess. But I think I'm gonna do that next time. I, I feel myself getting tired. And we, we still made some shapes. We changed our plates, our bowls to the right size. We made the mug, we made the cup, we made the sugar container. And I get, like, I hope to make more today, but I, I guess because the shape is more complex on these kind of things, like the sugar container, this one, and this one, maybe that's why it took longer. The benefit of, like, the whole spoon thing and the fork thing is, like, those are also the same shape, right? Just different lengths. So maybe that's why this is taking longer as well. I had hoped to actually make the cutting board today as well, but I guess we'll just have to do that next time. We can add the cutting board to our list though. Cutting board. I think after we're done with all these objects, uh, I could still make... I think some pants would be nice, right? Like frying pans, uh, pots, uh, containers, that sort of stuff. And then... Hmm, I think we should make a separate file for... For specific kitchen things, maybe. So if I think about the... Like spatula soup like the soup spoon that sort of stuff i'm guessing that should be a different different file or we could add it to this one as well and just mark it as a separate group it's something i want to sleep on i think but yeah, uh, I think we're done for today. I'll be back again Friday with more 3D modeling. Uh, probably the Monday afterwards as well. Mm, and then we're just gonna continue onwards. I am curious on how I'm gonna do the napkins. I didn't really look into that well enough yet. Hopefully, I can make it look nice like you know those like neat folded napkins like the like the triangle thing or like a pyramid shape that you usually find at a restaurant i think that would be nice have a good rest hey thanks aiko yeah uh Today was rough as well during the day, during my daytime job. There was like, there's the, the, something weird in my country at the moment. So when I was outside, it wasn't just rain. There were also moments of hail, like literal hail coming down, like froze, uh, frozen ice drops, uh, water drops. Uh, 
it, it was still like small, but still, the weather is kind of strange. And then an hour later, it's suddenly sunny again. Hopefully tomorrow will be a little bit more dry. Anyway, either way, same shit. <laughs> same shit, different day. <laughs> Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> or, oh, same, same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be back uh, on Friday. Thanks for uh, hanging out, uh, everyone. Really appreciate it. It, it really helps if people uh, can give their opinion on, uh, on stuff. Or even if it's just like small talk, it's nice to talk to people while you're working on this kind of stuff. So you can even like ask people like, oh, what do you think about it? Or should I do it this? Or, hmm, what's, what's a good shape for, for this object? Like that sort of stuff. Some feedback, pretty much. But yeah, I'm out. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back again. Uh, maybe next week we're gonna do some more gaming again on, on maybe Wednesday or Friday or Saturday. Uh, this weekend I am actually away. I'm going to Comic Con Holland. Uh, hopefully find some interesting stuff there. Maybe see some artists. Maybe ask their business card or whatever. Also, Jim, before you leave, bonk. Hey, wh why? What did I do to deserve that? <laughs> why are you bonking me, Aiko? I've been, I've been very well behaved today, right? <laughs> I even ate dinner. <laughs> oh, funny thing, that, uh, by the way, last thing. Um, on Twitter, I sometimes make a tweet like that people should probably clean their PCs as a reminder. So here's a reminder for you guys as well. Don't forget to clean your PC once in a while. Remove all that dust, that dust build up so your computer uh, can actually breathe and cool down. <laughs> You don't have a PC? Oh. Oh, do you have like a laptop then? Does a laptop count? Have fun, my guy. <laughs> yeah, I already cleaned up mine. But uh, yeah, I've been diddling a little bit too long. I'm gonna end stream now. Thanks for dropping by. Bye bye.